What's up everybody? So welcome back to the channel. Um, I just got back from Christmas, Christmas break. I was up in Washington and we have a ton of parts here now. So we got a lot to do. So let's get started. So some of the stuff I got, um, we got like head gaskets, push rods, some bolts, flywheel, the wrong bell housing. So I gotta send that back. Um, you get a different one. Uh, we have rocker arms and yeah, that's pretty much it so far. So I didn't make it back in time to sign for the package that had the engine mounts and everything in it. So even though I said that we're gonna mount the engine in the car, the next video, we're not gonna be able to do that, but we're still gonna be able to do some work. So I'm gonna basically be teaching you guys how to do an LS3 cam swap on a 5.3 iron block. Also, another thing we'll be installing is this Melling oil pump. Uh, it's super important to replace your oil pump when building these engines. Uh, apparently they go bad really fast and they cause a lot of problems. So I heard that Melling is probably like the cheapest, best way to go. And it seems like pretty good quality. So we'll be installing this too. Some other super sad news, someone stole my mail. So um, I don't have the oil pan yet that this is gonna work out or that this is gonna work with. But uh, I luckily found someone on Facebook who's selling it for like dirt cheap to, so I can, I can go pick it up the next couple days. Um, but basically the oil pan you're gonna wanna use to clear the actual cross member um, for the steering rack is the, it's like a 2002, 2002 GTO oil pan that has a front sump so it doesn't hang back over the where the steering rack is. All right, so first things first, you have to get the crank pulley bolt out. Um, these are usually pretty difficult. The way I did it is I actually jammed um, this piece of like pipe that I had from an old jack in there and then was able to crank down on it with a, with a breaker bar. Um, another good way is to just use an impact, probably the easiest way. And if it's really giving you trouble, you can heat it up with a torch or something like that. Um, then they'll pretty much break free every single time. Uh, next, we will be taking the water pump assembly off. All right, so water pump is off it's pretty easy um you can see where the missing bolts are there's just six of them and popped right off there's no issue with that so you guys shouldn't have any trouble removing this you go ahead and take the crank pulley off and then we'll get to the timing the actual timing cover so it turns out i didn't do my research and you actually need like this claw thing that grabs onto this and then pushes inward on uh the crank pulley bolt and it actually pries this off because this is super hard to get off. So that's how you're supposed to do it. I'm gonna see if I can just get it off myself and I'll get back to you guys if I have any luck with that. All right, it's the next day. I went to O'Reilly's and I picked up the tool. Um, it's pretty straightforward. I'll show you guys how to use it right now. So what you're gonna wanna get is the Chrysler Harmonic Balancer Polar Tool. Um, Basically, all it is, can't even figure out what's in this box. Basically, all it is, is this like claw that's going to grab on under here. You'll see actually, um, there's like these little lips right here that these claws are gonna hold on to. So I'm gonna set it up and then go ahead and just take this thing off. So this is what it looks like once it's set up. You thread the bolt through. Uh, you also want to add the crank bully bolt back in so it has something for it to push against. And you're basically going to tighten this and it's going to push down, pulling this out. And the claws will be pulling on the actual crank pulley until it comes off. All right, so I'm just going to keep going around until it starts to come off. I might have to actually put that pull back in the crank pulley to hold it in place. So basically what I did is I'm going to jam this in here and hold that down while I crank on this until this threads through and pulls it out. All right, so just like that, it's off. All right, so I actually had to leave again, um, but I'm back now. I just had to, I wanted to go return the tool so I don't forget about it because it was like 80 bucks. And then I also picked up a couple other things. While at O'Reilly's, I was curious um, and asked them about some of the other parts I needed. So the slave cylinder, I could only really find it for like $150 online. It was 60 bucks at O'Reilly's and they have a lifetime warranty on it. So even if it is cheaper and like not made as well, cause it's 60 bucks, I can just go get a new one if it breaks. Also I picked up a clutch. 
that I'll just be throwing on today too because that's pretty it's pretty quick and easy. But enough about that, let's get back to working on the cam. All right, so right now we're gonna be taking the front cover off. So it's just basically all these bolts along the top and the sides, and then it looks like on the bottom too, right here. Also keep in mind, this block looks like super dirty. There's spider webs and stuff like that in it. Um, but uh, I'm gonna be cleaning it. This front cover is really dirty too, but I'm getting a different one. I'm gonna have to use the Gen 4 like I said earlier, so I can have the cam positioning sensor, but there's a lot of stuff I need to clean up, so bear with me on that. I know it looks like a piece of shit, but it will start to look like these, because these look pretty bad earlier too. All right, so I got the bolts off, front cover just popped right off. Now what you can see is the cam gear, oil pump, timing chain. So what I was saying earlier about how I have to use a different cam gear. It's because it only has one bolt that goes onto the actual cam itself. While this one has three, so that's the biggest difference. Um, but these together came online, so it wasn't a big deal. So next up, we're gonna be taking the oil pump off. So all it is, is these four bolts right here, and then it should just come right off. So now that I have these four bolts off, I'm actually gonna have to, I don't have an engine stand, cause I'm cheap. Um, kinda wish I had one right now, but I'm gonna have to take the hoist, lift the engine up because of uh, the oil pickup tube is still bolted on from under here. And I'm gonna have to take the, the oil pan off to be able to get to it and unbolt it. Cause right now it's, it's off, but it's caught on that. So I can't take the oil pump off and get to everything that I need to without taking um, the oil pan on and the pickup tube off. pickup tube off so now oil pump just comes right off all right now I'm basically just gonna put the oil pan back on and set the engine back down on it uh, with a little ammo can I have since I don't have an engine stand I'm trying to do this budgeted in a garage just to so show that like pretty much anyone's able to do this um, with simple tools or cheap tools at least but uh yeah so let's keep getting um, down to the cam so we can actually take it out. So engine's back on the ground But one thing is is that it's not a top dead center anymore So we're gonna go ahead and realign it the way to do that is what you can do. you can actually Take the crank bully bolt and just stick it into here and Crank on it till you get the pistons back where they need to be So the reason that it is so important for the engine to be a top dead center is because the way the cam is going to line up, it has to be in the correct mechanical timing with the crankshaft. Otherwise, the valves will be opening and closing at the wrong times when the pistons are cycling. So, yeah, if you mess this up, you can blow your engine up. So make sure to do it very carefully. So the next thing, we're going to take off the three bolts of the cam pulley, and then the chain should just come right off. So once you have that off, uh, basically you're just gonna put these screws back in so you can use it as a handle to get the cam out. So notice that where the, or where the pin lines up, how it's basically 90 degrees right here on the cam. That's how you're gonna want the pin on the LS3 cam to line up. You can see it right there. There's a little plate right here that holds the cam in. Uh, it's just four, four more of these 10 mil bolts that are all over this engine. All you gotta do is just undo those and the cam will pop out. All right, so place it off. Set that there. And 
and there you go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and lube this up and go ahead and put it in the engine. It's gonna be okay. Basically just wanna get some oil all over this cam. So it slides in, has a little bit of lubrication to help it. All right, there you go. Go ahead and put the cover back on. So proper torque for the, the cam retainer plate, the bolts on it is 18 foot pounds. All right, so now that that's good, I'm gonna go ahead and install the timing gear. All right, so I messed up. Um, I'm gonna actually wanna put the chain on first. Otherwise, there's no way it would be able to go on. from the front, what the new cam positioning sensor will actually read off of are these bumps right here. So, like I said, I'm, I'm gonna have to get a Gen 4 front cover and this should all work together. But otherwise, I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten this down to 26 foot pounds and then we should be good to install the oil pump. All right, so there you have it. <clears throat> we got the oil pump installed, LS3 cam, and it wasn't too difficult, so. Yeah, that's how you get that done. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and wipe my hands off and then we'll get to putting on the flywheel and the clutch. That's gonna be it for today. I forgot that I don't actually have the bolts for the pressure plate itself. I only ordered the bolts for the flywheel. So yeah, I guess that's gonna be it. Okay, so just a couple things. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to you guys. Uh, I hit 50 subscribers yesterday and that's not that much, but it shows that the channel's progressing. So thank you for the support. Hopefully I'll hit a thousand eventually so I can start making money off these videos and then do cooler stuff to my car but um yeah for now it's very budget <laughs> um about that actually uh so what i'm doing with this car is doing an ls swap for less than what a turbo kit costs the way i'm doing this is that everything that i'm selling from the car is funding what needs to be done to it for the swap so the only thing that has come out of my pocket so far is the engine and some of the parts for the engine. So only about $700 just came out of my pocket. Everything else from selling my FA20, selling my headers, um, I sold my open flash tablet, and I have to sell my transmission still, actually. Exhaust, what else is there? Oh, an intake. And I should have pretty much everything I need after that. And yeah, so the goal for this is to swap the whole thing, get it running, for less than what it would cost for a turbo kit, which should be pretty easy based on what I've already done so far. All right guys, so that's it. Go ahead and leave a like if you like the video. Uh, leave a comment if you have a question or add me on Instagram and message me. Also, if I did something dumb, I probably did. I'm not like the best mechanic in the world. I'm learning as I do all this, just like you guys are going to be. So it's all a process, but leave a comment if I did something wrong. All right, thanks for the support and I'll see you guys later.